One of the tasks that you have to do in a lab practical is to find the eccentricity of an asteroid's orbit. And eventually, you're going to have to compare that eccentricity value to your given planet. Now, when you get to your station, you're going to see two of the points circled. These points are what we call our foci points. So for each person, the foci point is going to be different. And the main thing here is to follow the directions. All right, so let's move along. So step one, it says place safety pins at the circle letters, or in this case numbers, at your station. These letters become your foci. Okay, so you have foci number one and foci number two. So you're going to place the pins in the place where it's circled for you. Step two, place your string around the two safety pins. So you're going to have a piece of string and you're going to place it around the safety pins. Then you're going to stretch out the loop the loop string with a pencil and create your orbit. So you're just going to stretch it out, right? And then go around with it. You're going to go around the two pins. The next step, and this is very critical, this is where you start to gain the points. Choose one of your foci and label it S to represent the sun. So it's clearly stated on what you need to do on your instruction sheet. Then the next step is to place an X where the asteroid orbit is closest to the sun. As a matter of fact, where it's closest is also where it's fastest. So again, you're going to label one of your foci point S and where it's closest to the sun is going to be on the line with it where the orbit and what we'll later call the major axis intersect. Anywhere else, you will lose a point. Put the X directly where the orbit intersects with this major axis line. Now, measure the distance between the foci, focus 1, and focus 2, and the length of the major axis, each to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. Again, this is where points are either gain or loss. So the foci are the two points. The two points, point number one and point number two. So in this example, I measured the foci points to be just about three centimeters. So I labeled, so since it's nearest to the nearest tenth of a centimeter, it's 3.0 centimeters. If you do not put 3.0, you lose points. The other critical portion right here is the length of the major axis. The major axis is from one end of the ellipse or the orbit all the way to the other end of the ellipse or the orbit. So you can see here this whole length or this major axis is about 16 centimeters in length. So I measure 16 centimeters in length, but again, it's to the nearest tenth, so 16.0 centimeters. Okay, so 16.0 centimeters. This is very, very important. Then we solve for the eccentricity of an orbit to the nearest thousandths. So the thousandths plate is the third place. So E equals D over L. D represents the distance between the foci, and L represents the length of the major axis. So 3.0 divided by 16.0 centimeters, I get 0.1875, but we want it to the nearest thousandth place. So the thousandth place is the third number. So we have tens, hundreds, thousands. But in this case, if you look at the fourth number, it's a five. So you need to round up. So since this is a five, then you have to round the seven up to the eight, to an eight. So your final answer would be 0.188, right? There's no units. It's just 0.188.
that's how you round correctly if this value was less than 5 then you would leave it as 0.187 and lastly you would compare your given eccentricity value with your calculated eccentricity value